day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this general community overview. My name is Eric Hartnett, and I am the Director of Electronic Resources at Texas A&M University and the host for this video. This session is part of a series of onboarding videos for community members. You'll find links to the other videos in the series in the description of this video below, or see the member onboarding button on the Folio Project homepage at folio.org. We have three speakers today. Kathleen Berry, Head of Information Resources Management at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Simeon Warner, Associate Direct University Librarian at Cornell University, and Mike Gurrell, Director at Index Data. If you have questions, please use Zoom's Q&A feature to submit them, and we'll get to them uh, during the session. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. All right, thank you, Eric, and uh, glad to see everyone here on, on Zoom and on YouTube when it makes it that far. So uh, the first thing we'd like to cover, wait until you can see my screen, until I can see my screen. First thing we thought we would cover is sort of the fundamentals of the Folio community. So what is Folio and uh, sort of round out your understanding. Uh, uh, the folio itself, uh, the community has uh, documented this vision for the project, which is to be an open community supporting the evolving needs of a global of global libraries with a platform that serves us now and into the future. So, just to unpack that a little bit, um, the key phrases and, and concepts in this vision. Uh, open and community. So uh, we want to encourage uh, all participants um, and uh, really share a common vision and a common experience in helping to develop uh, a platform. Uh, globally, you know, we, we have, and we'll talk about this in more detail, but we have uh, representatives from organizations all around the world. And we want to develop a platform that serves us now and into the future. So it has to meet the needs of the libraries. The libraries, many, many libraries have gone live with Folio and continue to go live. Uh, I'm sure Simeon will talk a little bit about, uh, about that today in particular. But uh, the, the, the platform has to serve the needs now. But we also are forward looking. We think the platform is uh, the center for innovation for many years to come. It's technically. Um, built to uh, be a little future proof in terms of its architecture. And so um, we have, we all, the community has super high hopes and are super engaged in developing this product. The uh, little history around, around Folio. So the first code was written in 2015. Uh, discussions started really in 20, 2015, first code in 2016. Uh, it started off as a collaboration between Olay, EBSCO, and Index Data. You know, we all, all three organizations, me being part of Index Data, uh, came into the conversation sort of from our own needs and perspective, but we had some um, common interests and unified goals. And so we collaborated to start uh, down this path of creating a community owned innovative platform. And so it was real important for us that it was open source. It was uh, also critical that uh, there was a sense of community around it, that there was community ownership, meaning buy-in, um, a sense of, of creating things that didn't exist before, that was shared across all the people that were participating. We've grown now, uh, these five years later, to a vibrant community. There are, uh, we just had elections for our technical council and product council where we had um, you know, 500 individuals voting on the members of those councils. We had uh, recently in the project, we uh, voted on features for an upcoming release and we had 108 organizations represented in that voting task. Um, and so uh, we're pretty happy and pretty impressed with where Folio has come in those five years. So Folio is actually a, a many things, depending on your perspective. It's a community-owned services platform, an LSP. So Folio is software that you can run your library. But it's also an active open source development project, meaning there are developers and pull requests and, and defects and enhancements 
um, UX design. So it's, it's a real software project as well. And it's also a vibrant and active community. It's a place where people can, can meet, collaborate, develop relationships, share ideas, uh, have a common experience. Um, and it's, it's all virtual, which in this last year, uh, we've all been um, virtual, but it's super, for me, it's, it's been one of the highlights of my career um, to be a part of this shared experience and, and like-minded people trying to improve the world and, and create this platform that we can all leverage. The community itself is made up of many different types of people, different organizations. We're going to go into that in more, more detail, but it's a pretty, it's a very diverse uh, community. We have 1800 people on the Folio Slack. And uh, so just speaking again to how large the, the community is, uh, I have a typo here, um, should be 108 organizations, sorry for that. Um, and Kiwi, we, we, we name our releases and, and we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. Uh, we name our releases according to the alphabet. And so K is after J. Um, and so we're, we're talking about the Kiwi release later this year. In terms of a software product, the product, uh, the product is uh, still growing but the software project is very mature. So on GitHub, we have you know, 268 repositories. We have over 200 contributors to those repositories. We're now sort of um, at a cadence of three releases per year. We are primarily Scrum in the development. And so we formed into teams. And so there are 17 teams with 15 product owners, obviously being some overlap and seven Scrum masters. And uh, as a former chief information officer, um, metrics are important from a technical perspective, uh, especially when you as assess maturity of a product. And we've been successful in creating and tracking some key quality metrics for unit test code coverage, automated test coverage. We have performance targets. We look at regressions and escape defects. And so from an, it, it's uh, really a modern and mature software project um, so, which is important for sustainability reasons. I want to talk a little bit about a little bit in more depth about our community. And there are sort of four distinct types of organizations that um, are participating in Folio. Uh, from an individual perspective, we we are um, building software a software platform, and so we we have developers. Um, technical people that are contributing to the overall process. We also have a number of vendors that are participating in the project, and I'll go into more depth in that as well. We have consortia and networks around the globe, and we have in libraries of all types and sizes. And so these organizations all come together as peers and partners and cooperatively um, define sort of what the features are going to be, what the rules of the community will be, um, and how the overall effort proceeds. The kinds of individuals that we have uh, from a technical perspective are, you know, Folio is a polyglot platform. In other words, you can, you can write modules in any language that you want. It's intentionally uh, that way. Having said that, uh, sort of the, the uh, most common languages for our backend modules are Java. And so we have a lot of Java developers. We have uh, several Java frameworks that are used um, for backend types of things. On the front end, we're a JavaScript um, single page application. Um, uh, application. Uh, and so we have a lot of the front end developers are working with uh, JavaScript. We have DevOps engineers. Um, Folio has. Uh, is a container, it's primarily a containerized system. We have continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. Um, and and we, we are operating primarily as a project, we're operating in AWS uh, in terms of the cloud environment. The different hosting providers uh, have their own, uh, have made their own choices in terms of how they're hosting things. There are certainly organizations that are uh, hosting themselves as well but uh, the project itself has many DevOps needs. And so we have those folks. We have QA engineers dedicated to testing, defining tests and so forth. We have product owners. 
in the agile space, the product it's the standard sort of definition of a product owner representing the customer, helping the development teams define the stories, make them understandable, uh, et cetera. Scrum Master is sort of managing the process. And uh, Simeon, I know we'll talk about this later, but UX designers are also super important um, from, uh, from Folio's uh, development process perspective. So these are all the types of people that are contributing. And so as, as new organizations and new individuals uh, hop into the, to the project and they want to know how they can help and contribute. And from a technical perspective, these are some of the areas that we're, we're always in need of. We have many more features that we aspire to accomplish than we actually can get done in the time frame that we want. So the more help is uh, appreciated. As I mentioned, we have many different types of libraries. So we have several large academic libraries, uh, institutions like University of Chicago, Texas A&M, UMass Amherst, Cornell, which you're hearing from today. We have uh, many other smaller academic institutions, Simmons University, St. Vincent College, there's a number of them. Uh, interestingly, we also have public libraries. So Sp Spokane Public Library, Shanghai Public Library in China. National Libraries, National Library of Florence. Uh, I know there are a couple other national libraries that are in the um, planning and evaluation stage. They haven't quite gone live yet. Um, and then we also have uh, a global or international presence. So many institutions in the US, but we also have lots of institutions throughout Europe. And as I mentioned in China, there's a, a, an increasingly growing community of folks in China that are um, implementing, considering implementing and contributing back to Folio. Another interesting group that has uh, been very influential in Folio are networks and consortia. So we have a, a couple of consortia in the traditional sense, uh, Fenway Libra Library Organization in Massachusetts, the Boston area, or Marmot, which is uh, an organization in Colorado. And then we have a number of German networks. And I've, I've personally become more familiar with sort of how the libraries co collaborate in Germany. And so there are several no networks throughout the country and all of them, essentially all of them are um, either considering or very, very active in Folio. And then the last group of organizations are service providers. So EBSCO has been uh, super critical in the creation and development of Folio. They've done uh, the, the lion's share of funding as well as contributing technical resources, index data, as I, uh, as I may have mentioned earlier, has been um, part of the creation of Folio since the beginning, uh, donating technical resources, architecture development as well as other things. Knowledge integration, uh, a company in the UK has also been super critical in creating uh, many important Folio components. Um, Bywater has, has been a service provider for many, uh, mostly smaller, but many institutions that have adopted Folio. So there's a, a vendor component, as well as all the different libraries, consortia, networks that all sort of collaborate to make Folio what it is. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kat to talk us through um, governance. So good morning. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Mike and to Eric. I just wanted to add to Eric's kind introduction that um, I am from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and we're part of the five college consortia. Um, so today I'm gonna to talk about the governance. And as Mike has already mentioned several times that Folio is open source and it is owned by our community, which means that anyone can join the Folio community. We're open to all. Participation is welcome and encouraged, and we believe that your input can make a difference. Next slide. So Folio has three governing councils, and these councils communicate regularly to coordinate their work, and each can charter working groups to accomplish particular tasks. The Folio Product Council guides the functional development and manages the scope of the library services platform. With close collaboration from the other two councils, they are responsible for, for, for providing the product vision, strategy, and roadmap. The technical council maintains the community's technical policies, best practices, infrastructure, 
and the operational health of the library services platform. The Community Council ensures the community is strong and healthy. This council is also responsible for the smooth operation of community activities, ensuring the community is collaborative and inclusive, and managing the project's financial responsibilities. Next slide. Council members are elected by the community. In order to foster diversity and involvement by a broad range of members, the seats have restrictions on length of term. The nominees for the councils must be from member organizations, which are organizations which have formally committed resources to Folio. Next slide. The core of Folio is, the is its special interest groups. These groups are aligned with the functional areas of Folio, such as electronics resources management or metadata management. They define workflow, feature requirements, and other specifications for the Folio Library Services platform. Most special interest groups meet weekly, and all are open for anyone to attend. Next slide. And now I think Simeon is going to take over. Yes, thank you, Kat. Um, I get to talk about uh, the process of making sausages, making a library services platform. And it turns out that the way you make it has an impact on the final product. Folio, as, as Mike was saying, is a very large software system in the end. It's a project with participants throughout the world and it's community developed and distributed in its nature. But I think the foundational thing about the way Folio is built is that it's built from a desired set of user experiences, what we say UX on these slides. We don't start from you know, building up from the nuts and bolts, we start from what user needs are we trying to fulfill? What experience are we trying to create for the users of this system? Once we've identified the needs, we can then identify the information, the workflow sequences and the interactions necessary to complete them and only then think of how to build a system that's designed to support those needs. Next slide, please. Now, this looks a little pre-pandemic, but hopefully we'll get back to this sort of picture in the near, near future again. There are a large number of in-person meetings bringing together subject matter experts, people who participate in the SIGs and designers. This one, um, not one that I was at, uh, was part of a design process that uh, pulled together expertise to map and solve uh, the organization of a particular information domain. Next slide, please. Key to these processes are these interest groups, which are really the, the key community resources for understanding the needs of the user community in particular domains. So there are special interest groups for areas such as electronic resource management or acquisitions. Uh, this is a big picture scoping out electronic resource management to try and map out that pro process uh, with the help of UI designers and UX experience experts. Because Folio is so large, it's critical that we break down the different aspects of the projects into groups that are focused on specific areas that, where the experts can get together and delve into the detail and then communicate among those processes. Next slide, please. More stickers. And I do look forward to getting back to this in the real world. Um, this is another example. Uh, mapping out the workflow for print, electronic, and monographic subscriptions using a conceptual inquiry model to find the best path forward and to optimize the interactions. Um, next slide, please. So one has done the initial exercises to map out the processes, the expected workflows and the interactions. We then come back to how does this appear to the end user of the system. So this is an early design mock-up of the user interface um, around uh, well, 
item and patron rules. Um, this is a sort of sketch that's used for everyone to say, okay, so how would we interact with this? We, we click on that button, we enter data here, and then these sorts of pictures are refined into slightly more formal diagrams before they're then taken back to be used to build the system. Next slide, please. So I think I'm the third person to say that uh, Folio is an open source project. Uh, all the code is available on GitHub for anyone to download, interact with, or even make a pull request on to make a contribution. Um, the code itself is licensed under Apache 2 license, which is a fairly permissive open source license. I think within the spectrum of projects for academic libraries, it's the most popular license at the moment, I think. Um, anyone who does submit a pull request or otherwise contribute to the code is required to sign a code contributor agreement that protects the project uh, and the intellectual property to make sure that we actually do have the rights necessary to maintain that open source license and ability for reuse. As Mike said, the, the work is really done by team. I think he had a slide with about 17 teams on it. Um, and those teams follow agile practices, typically using the Scrum process. This means that the teams have someone to, to lead the Scrum process, a Scrum master. But another critical role is the product owner. That person is the interaction between the development team and the larger set of requirements, the users, the SIGs who have perhaps defined define the specifications for a particular feature and ensures alignment with, with larger groups and coordinates with other product owners. Next slide, please. We have for some time been working at three planned releases per year. A release process is quite a a, a lengthy process. So at the time one release is being made, the next release is being worked on, and the release after that is being scoped out and planned. So it's just kind of a, a sequence of things. Um, features are ranked by the community. I think Mike mentioned that 108 institutions had participated in the ranking features which will be worked on in what is going to be the release after next um, and they also ensure that if there are elements of the community that have sponsored additional development effort for features that any work there doesn't interfere with the community ranked process and that development all of these groups have regular meetings um, as I said, the special interest groups are really core to defining what we're trying to achieve in terms of functionality of the platform in different subject areas. And then we have the product owners, the technical leads that help make sure that can all work, communicate with the development teams to ensure that the underlying foundation can meet those needs. And then the product council takes overall responsibility for the library services platform as a coherent whole, as a product that meets the core library needs. As part of the release process, there is a, a bug fest, and that's something where there's plenty of opportunity for community collaboration and involvement to help test out new features before they're released to make sure they do indeed meet needs and we haven't introduced unexpected features. Uh, next, please. So Folio really is a very large community and it does span many different parts of the world, different communication styles, different ways of working. And it's put, important that we all work together within an acceptable manner of working. So we have a code of conduct, next please which if you like, me, I'll just read for a second. We as contributors, maintainers and users of the system pledge to make participation in our project and our community 
a harassment-free experience for everyone, regardless of ability, age, body size, education, ethnicity, gender identity and expression, level experience, nationality, personal appearance, race, religion, sex characteristics, sexual identity, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic state. Almost got there. Um, this really is important, and it's important that everyone who's part of the community internalize, believe, and live this. Next slide. It's critical that if we're gonna maintain a thriving and healthy community spanning such diversity, we continue always to use welcoming and inclusive language to be respectful of differing viewpoints. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone has to think the same. We must have constructive criticism. We must have debate. We must have different opinions. And only then when we can debate them healthy and constructive fashion will we arrive at the best solutions. And we must bear in mind, you know, what is the best for the community? The best, best for every individual participant necessarily possible, but how can we work together to form the best overall? And we're all human. We all need to show empathy towards our other community members to understand where they are in the moment and to be accommodating. Uh, there are community support, volunteers and ways to report any issues with conduct with the community. Thank you. I think that is the end of our presentation then. So this concludes this general community overview. We invite you to view the other videos in the Follow Community Onboarding series by looking in the description of this video below or following the member onboarding button on the Folio Project homepage at folio.org. Thank you to Mike, Simeon, Kathleen, uh, for sharing their expertise today. And we look forward to seeing you in the Folio community. Have a great day.